Good morning, cultists. Welcome to Dessert Time with Cthulhu's. Well, folks, it's that time again to send off another successful campaign with a postmortem. I'm not gonna lie, this one surprised me. When I first started this campaign, I didn't think I would enjoy it as much, but I ended up having an absolute blast. If nothing else, this experience has certainly opened my eyes to the possibilities of future Christian campaigns. Now, before we delve into our family history and our accomplishments, let's go through the rest of the world and see what we've crafted. So, up north in Britannia, it seems that the seat of uh, emperorship has moved from Dublin to Scotland? Huh. Really? How did this happen? Ah, I see. They are still operating under open elective. Okay, nice. And she's been crowned by the Pope. Fantastic. And she's also content. I wonder if this is someone that we installed into Scotland ourselves. Hmm. Wait, let me take a look at your kingdom title. That should give us a clue. Yeah, it's actually the same person that we um, gave the Kingdom of Scotland to. Fascinating. So I guess it hasn't been that long. Wait, how long has it been? Um... Well, she's 50 years old, and I think I usually gave the titles to the younger folks, so it might have been 30-something years, maybe? Possibly, who knows. Anyways, in um, places that we haven't really touched that much, i.e. Scandinavia, it seems that Norway's kind of the dominant force, followed by Denmark and then Svithjord? Mm, or is it kind of the other way around? Just in terms of their military strength, though. Uh, yeah, I'd say Norway is probably the strongest, followed by Denmark and then Svithjord. Hmm, wait, he's tribal? No, they're all tribal. Wait, sorry. Yeah, yeah, they're all tribal. Oh, except for uh, Denmark. So maybe Denmark's actually the strongest one. Well, it doesn't matter. The Falkir is in Denmark, and I guess that's what's the um, most important bit there. And Lapi um, is... Finnish and also Germanic. Interesting. Well, we'll take a look at the uh, religion map mode in a bit. Um, but Eastern Europe is... kind of still a bit of a mess. Um, Ruthenia seems to be expanding somewhat, but uh, otherwise... pretty much sta still status quo, I would say. Uh, with Novgorod here, I guess it's a little past Eastern Europe, isn't it? Yeah, Novgorod here seems to be uh, taking a fair bit of control which is pretty cool, but otherwise, the Bashkiria Horse Lords are still mostly uh, dominating this area here. Hmm, I wonder if they would eventually win over. Possibly? But I guess it kind of depends on how aggressive the AI wants to be. The Eastern Seps we've taken over, so that's dealt a pretty heavy blow to the um, Horse Lords around here, just in general, I think. Because they, they tend to, um, I guess, kind of cluster around uh, one location and then just really wreck shit all over the place. But um, since we've taken the eastern steps, I think we've somewhat curtailed that. And these guys are feudal Tengri. Wow. Yeah, I did not see this coming at all. It was This was really uh, fortuitous that they um, settled down. Wait. Abbasids? They're still around? There's still 66 of them. Interesting. Hmm. And there's Zikri, or at least th this guy Zikri. Or Zikri or something. Weird. But very cool. And we still have Tibet as a tributary state. <laughs> Not really what I intended, but sure. We could actually release him, but nah, that's fine. He's a strange looking wife. Why does she not look Budpa? Um. Oh. I think I see. Ah, uh, okay. Okay. So I think if we go all the way back... There we go. That's why she looks Iranian. Because <laughs> ancestrally, she kind of is, I guess. And uh, down in India, the Rashtrakuta are still doing pretty well, I would say. Um, I think they pretty much have... Well, most of the Jure uh, Deccan Empire territories, except for Ruda here. I'm surprised that they haven't been able to um, take this all back. Huh. 
a lot more troops than I expected. And they've got a um, fair number. Obviously no match for ours, but still. And I'm sure we'd have a lot more uh, troops if I let go of some of my vassals. But, nah, that's fine. And Orissa here is a, um, is a little bitch of uh, Rash Dakuta, it seems. Alright, well, uh, um, over in Africa, Panem Bornu are Fraticelli, and, um, I think they've got a smattering of, um, still African uh, vassals here and there, but I'm pretty sure the, uh, Fraticelliism is here to stay. Yeah, good grief, really? Even here? Ah, uh, fair enough. And it seems that they're being attacked by... Oh, Mali? Really? Okay. And also, this guy's trying to take Darfur. Which kind of makes sense. This, however, not so much, but we're not here to discuss that. And Mali here is also, um, Praticelli, and it seems that they've actually converted all of their vassals into, uh, Fraticellism. Wow. Holy crap, holy. The Latin Empire is still- oh, shoot, I forgot to do something, um, that I meant to do sooner. But anyways, my brother is still ruling the, uh, Latin Empire. Um, and he's got a- oh wait, that's Asnar. Huh. And this is Agnatic Cognate pre uh, Primogeniture, so he's just gonna inherit everything. And I think he's actually in my court, isn't he? Interesting. Well, whatever, that's fine. And I think that's about it for the world outside of our realm. Croatia is no longer... Well, I mean, it's still under, under the rule of our um, dynasty, I guess. Sure. Huh. It is a shame that Avalon never actually um, managed to have that many children. I kind of wish they were still under the control of our... Uh, of her uh, brood, so that we can have this uh, flourish a bit more, but no, there's still only three with this bloodline. Okay, so, yeah, I think that's about the, um, all I really have to say about the territorial stuff. So let's take a look, look at the religion map mode. Wow. Uh, <laughs> the majority of the world is now Fraticelli. Holy crap. That's insane. I think this may be the... Let me just take a look at the um, ledger and see what we've actually ended up with in terms of religion size. 1,035 counties are now Fraticelli. Wow. Comparatively, only 12 remain Catholic. Holy crap. That is incredible. Okay, so just looking at this. Um, one Waldesian, two Cathar, 12 Cath uh, Catholic. No Lollard, and, um... Geez. That's pretty insane. I gotta say, pretty insane. I cannot believe that Tengrism is actually the second most populous, um, religion out there. Really? Even next to, uh, the Germanic faith? That's insane. That is pretty insane. Still not, uh, reformed, though. Which, I mean, kinda makes sense, I guess. I don't think I've ever seen Tengrism get reformed even once by the AI. Maybe once, actually? I've certainly never seen the African religion get uh, reformed, I don't think. Uh, Germanic religion gets reformed quite often. Um, what else gets reformed, I find? That's about it, really, in terms of uh, pagan religions. Yeah, only Germanic stuff gets um, reformed, I find. Anyways, before I start to sound more like a broken record, um, what else do we need to look at here? I think that's about it for our religion map mode, right? Oh, wait, no. Maybe there's a bit more to uh, see. So, um, I guess the little bits of uh, Catholicism that still remain are mostly in Britannia? I can see two uh, right there, but what else? Where else does Catholicism exist? Uh, a little bit over there, a bit over there, and... Hmm... I don't know if it's even worth looking for. No, because it is a dying sect of uh, Christianity, which is pretty funny. <laughs> okay, what else do we want to look at in terms of our ledger? Mm, I guess we can start going through our dynasty now. But independent states, obviously with the strongest, followed by the Latin Empire, and then the Deccan Empire, followed by Tibet. Really? Tibet's stronger than Britannia? No way. That's crazy. 
What have you been doing that you're not as strong as you should be? Hmm. Where's Tibet? Oh, with all their um, military fully ref or fully uh, replenished. I guess that kind of makes sense. Wait, so is Tibet bigger? Uh, realm size 235. Britannia is 303. Huh. Hmm. Not really sure what's going on in terms of that, but I, I'm assuming the, that the AI kind of fucked up uh, somewhere along the lines. All right, let's actually take a look at the bloodlines left in the world. Um, so, the most populous one is the Tibetan one, as it always tends to be. Followed by the Carling blood. Ah, uh, I'm pretty sure the vast majority of this belongs to us. Yeah. The vast majority. There's still a little bit left from the Dinavara bloodline, which I think may have actually been a um, cadet branch of our of our dynasty, if I'm not, not mistaken. So this guy, Lope the Hunter. Uh, wait, he must have come from, from someone, right? So how did the Carling blood start with these guys then? Okay, let's see how far back we need to go. So, this guy might have been the first one to get the Carling Blood. Um... Ah... I see. So, he got the blood from my kinswoman. Okay. Yeah, that's it. So, this isn't a cadet branch of our uh, dynasty, but... Um, the reason why these guys have so much, um... Carling Blood is because of, uh, Electros. Who was, uh, wed to this guy. Wait, they both have the Carling Blood? Oh. So, wait. This guy was born from... Oh. Okay. Huh. So, does that mean that... Excommunicated? Right. Right. Okay. Hmm. So, how did this guy have... I guess he was just... Had the Carling blood? Oh. Oh, he totally did. Interesting. I don't know why I'm so confused and hung up on this, but, um... Yeah, these guys are somewhat related to us, so I guess that kind of makes sense. So, in essence, the... We basically hold all the Carling blood in the world, so... You can blame us for that uh, nonsense. The third most populous is uh, the blood of Ragnar Lothbrok, Leatherpants himself. Whose blood we were never able to um, incorporate into our own, but I guess we never really tried to um, get too much of the blood mixing until the, I guess, uh, half of the campaign, or the midpoint of the campaign, you know, or closer to the end. Which is unfortunate, because I feel like I could have gotten the history is in my blood um, achievement uh, through this, but that's fine. We can leave that for another time. Um, so then after Leather Pants, we have Transylvanian's bloodline. The Saintly Blood, which is the first Saintly Blood I've ever gotten in any of my uh, playthroughs. Which, um, definitely came in unexpected, I would say. I think in this campaign we've had... I've accomplished all the achievements that I set out to accomplish, plus a few more, like uh, St. Thomas's Dream, as well as Never Start a Land War in Asia, and the, um, one for the Saintly one? Yeah, that one I did not um, anticipate or expect either, so that was pretty cool. And then we have Zeister's bloodline and all that such, but I guess we might as well just go through our family um, history if we want to go through the bloodline stuff. Uh, be before we do that, let me just uh, take a look at this too. So we have the majority of the wonders in the world, obviously. Um, the ones that we don't have, Stonehenge, because we gave that away, the Hagia Sophia and the mausoleum at the Holly Holly Carnassus. Um, but other than that, well, I guess they're building a cas uh, castle? No, a cathedral in uh, Lesvos. <laughs> so they've got a uh, lesbian uh, cathedral being built here. <laughs> Fantastic. Who commissioned this, by the way? Who commissioned this lesbian cathedral? Oh, this guy. I see. Oh, so my cousin started it. And then Ordonio took over, and then Muno renamed it. From what? From what? The 
Grand Cathedral to uh, Lesvos Cathedral, I guess? Huh. It's a shame I can't rename it for myself, otherwise I would definitely name it the Lesbian Capital, or the Lesbian um, Cathedral. Sorry, something I forgot to do is change our adjective, which should not be Latin, to Ultramarine. There we go. <laughs> and that, of course, changed nothing, but that's fine. Um, actually, no, it should have changed Hispanian. What? But the Hispanian title isn't my primary title, though. If I do that, that's Hispanian, right? Um, what if I set this back to Ultramar? Oh. Maybe I need to destroy this title, then. Alright, sure. Uh, you know what? Let's not worry about that. It's fine. Just imagine that this says uh, Ultramarine Army instead of Hispanian Army. And we're all good. <laughs> Wait. What if we change the... Hispanian thing... To that as well. Adjective... Ultra... Marine. Ah, uh, still looks the same. Unbelievable. That's just some unadulterated garbage right there. All right, well, you know what? That's fine. Let's just go through our family uh, dynasty now. Okay, so where do we start? Oh my god. What are these long ass lines? I guess we did have a lot of children and such. Let's go to the very beginning. The absolute top. And we arrive at... Wow. This is so fucking slow. Who? Oh. Maybe we've gone back a little too far. Um, this was before our time, I'm sure. Uh, yes. Actually... Go th oh, come on. Alright. This is gonna be in insane. There we go. So, we started this campaign as Duke Lope. Who was, uh, Occitan, I believe, if I'm not mistaken. But we quickly changed his, um... Uh, what's it, culture to a Basque, thankfully, uh, which allowed us to change our, um... Succession law to absolute cognatic. So, oh my god. There we go. So our very next ruler was, in fact, Sovix, a lady. And she was beatified, but not, uh, sanctified. But that's still, still pretty cool. Um, so... I don't really remember what we did with Lope. I think we just ended up getting a whole bunch of, uh, duchies. Um... Which was, you know... I guess... Pretty cool, but, uh, not nearly as cool as, uh, Sovix, Um, taking the, uh, Kingdom of Aquitaine. And I guess she was first married to Mediogre. Wait, who was Mediogre in relation to Sovix though? Uh... Our kinsman. Oh, right, right. That was, I think, uh, Sovix's uncle? If I'm not mistaken? Yeah, because he gave... No, no, no. He gave birth to... Might have been a sibling or something. <sighs> this is so confusing. <laughs> I'm sorry. I just can't seem to uh, get wrap my head around this. So you were the son of. Oh. Wait. So that's mediocre. That was. Oh, it was me. It was Sovix's nephew. Right, right. The one that we had uh, married to, um, or Adela was married to. Um, what's his face? The uh, Carling guy. Yeah, Carl the Quarreler of Bavaria. <laughs> Wait, is this how we started the whole, um, Carling Blood thing? I think so, right? Yeah, because together they had a fuck ton of children, and then Transylvanian was our first ruler to have the Carling Bloodline. Yeah, I remember now. Okay, so, um, I believe with Sovix we managed to, um, form the Kingdom of Aquitaine. Um, and she also got the first Bloodline, which is the, um, uh, the Warrior Philosopher Bloodline. And she lived to a ripe old age of 73. So before that though, um, Lope died at 66, which is tied for the youngest um, death of our uh, rulers ever, I think. So anyways, um, after Sovix came Transylvanian, who I guess started out, who started out with uh, two bloodlines, the Carling bloodline as well as the uh, warrior philosopher stuff. 
and then after she died, and a few years later, um, she got the she was our first uh, to get um, sanctified, which is pretty cool. And I think, yeah, Transylvanian is when we started the whole Fraticelli thing, which I think really opened up a lot of doors for us. I think this was kind of one of the turning points of our campaign when we got to uh, rejig all of our um, vassals and whatnot. Thankfully, it didn't take too long. Uh, I believe it took up a couple of episodes or so, but mm, could have been longer for sure because I've had uh, like streaks of uh, vassal management that took like far too long for sure, but I think I've gotten a little bit better at uh, ignoring that stuff. Anyways, sorry, back to our um, family dynasty stuff. I tend to get a little sidetracked with all this uh, jibber jabber. Good grief, especially when the fucking family uh, tree looks like a more like a twisting turning vine. Anyways, uh, so Transylvanian um, was sanctified later and she started the whole Fraticelli thing, which is pretty cool. In the future though, I might try another campaign if I do um, do another Christian campaign or a Catholic campaign. I think I'll probably stick with being Catholic. Fraticelli is really cool because um, it's a lot easier to uh, vassalize the um, ducal level Pope, but I think it's kind of bugged. I think there are a lot of, uh, there were some features, maybe not a lot, because I don't really, I can't, no, because I don't really um, play um, Christians very often. But I feel like there was a lot of uh, stuff that we could have done as a Catholic that we weren't allowed to as a Fraticelli for whatever reason. I feel like either maybe the Fraticelli religion just didn't really get much attention after, um, during the d development of Holy Fury or something. But it certainly feels like uh, a lot of stuff we couldn't do for whatever reason, and I feel like it's just an oversight by Paradox, or it's a bug or something, which I guess is kind of an oversight too. So anyways, um, but, sorry, something else I wanted to discuss was how we had this kind of branching thing happening in our dynasty, where we had our main branch, and then we had the rival branch, when uh, shit started to go crazy go nuts, with our uh, var various uh, family members and their children being all of the, um, well, wrong religion and also being independent. Like this guy, when he was the king of Germany, he had his own thing going on, even though Transylvanian was, um, and her bloodline was supposed to be the, um, the whole thing. But then again, I mean, we also had children as Transylvanian who ended up taking the uh, throne for various places when they should not have. Yeah, Obeko, I don't think, was never meant to rule, but somehow things just kind of ended up with him taking the throne. I think I remember that, which is <laughs> pretty interesting. <laughs> well, I guess that's what happens when you have a lot of children who have um, claims and shit. And people are discontent and they want, uh, what, what is going on here? And they want um, claims to be pressed and all that such. Jeez. This family map is like, or family uh, fucking uh, trees really messed up. I'm seeing like duplicates of uh, people. Good grief. Anyways, uh, so I think Transylvanian may have been the first one to go down the Hermetic Society route. I think just based on the uh, number of, yeah, and the fact that she was a pilgrim too. I think uh, Sovix was the last one to join the uh, Benedictine Order. And then after her, I think um, Transylvanian ended up um, starting the whole chain of uh, Hermetic Society stuff. Which I gotta say is still fairly powerful, I think. I don't know if I can say that it's overpowered, because there's certainly some uh, cost to it. Like for example, if you want to um, use the artifacts that your ancestors created, or the, um, what's it, the uh, Magnum Opus stuff, then you have to stay with the Hermetic Society, unless your learning is like, sky high. But even then, I think there's still some uh, stipulations on uh, which uh, uh, artifacts you can or cannot use. So it's a bit of a toss-up, um, but still pretty cool. I don't know. In the future, though, I might want to um, try out the... I mean, I've already tried out the other uh, societies. Um, we can't really do the... Um, what's it? These warband stuff as uh, Catholics, can we? No, I don't think so. Unless we're somehow norm nomadic. Uh, what about wolf warriors? I guess for tribal? Perhaps? Because it says one of the following must be true. Mm. 
Yeah, I think as long as we're not zealous and we're tribal, we might be able to join uh, different warrior societies, even if we're uh, Catholic and whatnot. But it is kind of a shame that the uh, Catholics don't have their own uh, warrior society thing. But, I mean, they get access to a whole bunch of other stuff, so I guess it kind of uh, balances out. Is this still going on? How long has this mission been going on for? This is insane. Good grief. I keep getting sidetracked, I'm so sorry. Uh, so anyways, after Transylvanian came Zeister. And with Zeister, we, I believe, got the Mortal Blood of Alexander, which came in really clutch. I love this bloodline. I love being able to invade stuff and just take over entire empires in one fell swoop. It gets a little uh, difficult to manage at times, especially if you're taking on a much, um, like a very big uh, empire. But um, still really cool that you can just basically take everything at, in one fell swoop. So awesome bloodline for sure. Mm, and with Zeister, I think we embarked on our first crusade. Is that right? Yeah, I think Zeister was at around that time when we did our, our first crusading and stuff. And, wait. We took Africa with her, right? Or did I not? I could have sworn. We took Africa and then we set up someone else. Or sorry, not Africa, but the Maghreb Kingdom. kingdom and we set uh, Hellion as our beneficiary, right? Yeah, and then Teresa took over, and then uh, she ended up not having any children because she was in my court for 50 million years or something, and I just completely forgot about her existence, didn't get her married, etc., etc., which doesn't really matter in the end. And then Avalon took over because uh, she didn't. The uh, previous owner didn't have any heirs. Okay, so I think that's what happened with uh, Zeister. Hmm. And then Vanthus came along, and I believe Vanthus was the one that got the whole, um, took over, what's it, all of the, uh, de jure territory of Ultramar now, um, with our use of the, uh, invasion CB, which came in, again, really, really clutch. It's awesome timing there. Wait, did the Kingdom of Jerusalem get in- are you serious? Oh, come on, man. What keeps happening here? How, how do these guys keep getting um, given, like, multiple vice royalties? Did I do that? Did I err? I may have erred. Conquered as a claimant? What? You can do that with vice royalties? Interesting. Annoying, but uh, interesting. Good to see... Good to know that uh, that's possible, I guess. So, anyways, um... What was I talking about? Oh yeah, Vanthus was the one to uh, do the whole... Um, was the one to get us the uh, Deus Vault achievement, I think. When we established the um, empire formerly known as uh, uh, Outremer. Which I believe is just French for overseas, and which is what I tried to do with the whole Spanish thing. But um, apparently Basque is a completely different language. I just kind of assumed that Basque was um, like a dialect of uh, Spanish because I... I used to have a, a co-worker who was actually Basque, and he spoke Spanish all, t all the time, which I guess kind of makes sense, considering that the um, Basque people uh, currently do live in uh, what is now f uh, Spain, so I, I guess they would learn both Basque and uh, Spanish. But yeah, he never mentioned that uh, Basque was its own um, own uh, language. We, we, we talked about that stuff for a little bit, um, but yeah, anyways, I, I guess I didn't really uh, never clue into it uh, myself. So yeah, um... I mean, I guess we could just change this to the Basque version of out Overseas, but I don't know how uh, accurate the Google translation is. Uh, anyways, um, so Vanthus was the one to um, basically destroy the um, uh, Islamic uh, ca uh, caliphates. Um, and I guess they never really fully recovered from that uh, stuff. Um, and then she died of cancer. But I think we kind of let her die of cancer because we wanted to have Marios take over. Oh, with Avalon, I believe... Yeah, yeah, Vanthus was also the one to join the Fourth Crusade, I think. The whole crusade for the Byzantine Empire, which was really fucking cool. Um, forget what else 
also gonna say about that uh, the fourth crusade stuff yeah um it's good to know that that's how it works it's from what I can tell it just seems to be like RNG if you get lucky um, perhaps that's when it triggers I'm still not entirely sure because I feel like I should have been able to change the crusade target to uh, the Byzantine Empire at any point when the crusades were being um, you know thought of and all that stuff but uh, yeah um, so after Vanthus who died at 76 came Avalon and Marios it's a shame that Avalon didn't have more children but I think she was actually kind of busy um, uh, kicking ass and taking names and all that shit so she didn't have time to uh, pump out children she did have the two children though uh, the two sons though one was a bastard that was she had with Ramiro this guy really what the hell did you see in this guy who was vomiting having diarrhea and fevers all over the place Maybe Avalon just really likes dudes who um, puke all over the place and shit out of their uh, anuses and um, are just super clammy and sweaty. Could be a thing. I mean, I don't want to kink shame, so, you know, if that's your thing, that's your thing. But anyways, um, after Avalon, or sorry, after uh, Vanthus came Marios, who I think may have been, she's tied with as the, uh, the youngest uh, ruler to to snuff it in our uh, campaign thus far at the age of uh, 66 which we kind of let happen because I think Pacifax was maybe 18 at the time when she inherited which is pretty damn cool which is why we were able to pump out as many children as we have now and we're still and we're already uh, pregnant too we could have had I think four more children if we wanted to but after that last uh, difficult pregnancy I got a little scared so I decided to just maybe forego the whole uh, pumping out baby shit <laughs> I don't know. Uh, maybe we should have risked it, but that's fine. I mean, I didn't think that we'd have another um, succession in our um, campaign. So, I think Marios may have been the first ruler to not have her own bloodline. Besides uh, Lope, that is. I was kind of hoping that we could incorporate um, Avalon's bloodline into our own here, but sadly, it didn't quite work out. And I think that bloodline's kind of on the... Um, dying site, isn't it? Yeah, I think there's only three people. A real shame. We somehow managed to uh, get the bloodline of um, Attila the Hunt to survive, though. <laughs> so this is going to be interesting. <laughs> Unfortunately, none of them are geniuses, which really just takes the fucking piss out of me, but uh, oh well. Wait, what? Why did you... How did this... Okay, well, fine, I guess. Maybe I was aware of that. I don't know. Um, but anyways, we ended up with, uh, at the very end, uh, we ended up with Pacifax, who inherited at the age of, uh, 18, and is one of the, I think, only other Truce Breaker characters I've ever played in the entire time that I've played CK2. I don't know what it is. To me, um, breaking truces is just like, just like a, it's like a soft lock. It's like something I don't ever want to do. I, I'm aware I can do it. And I know it's not a huge, huge penalty, especially when your dynasty's already built up so much uh, prestige, it doesn't really matter. But to me, it's like a soft lock, and I don't want to violate that truce, because the fun, I, I feel like the fun, the part of the fun comes um, out of, uh, out of uh, finding a way to circumvent the truces, either through assassination, or, oh wait, that other assassination thing that we did was, uh, <laughs> that was a lot of fun. When I basically uh, hired uh, lustful uh, sexual ladies to um, to assassinate the uh, the uh, children's crusade guy, <laughs> I guess it would have been cool to see that in action. But I'm also kind of glad that we stopped that nip then the bud, because it seemed like I wasn't able to call in uh, crusades against um, heretics and whatnot, even though it seems like you know the Pope himself can actually call crusades for it. But yeah, even still, probably best that we uh, nip that in the bud. But in the future, I, I definitely let that progress and just to see uh, how it all goes down. Um, but yeah, uh, so yeah, part of the fun for me uh, comes in finding ways to uh, work around the truces and uh, do the whole assassination stuff. It only really works in uh, certain circumstances, but uh, still cool that it's an option. But yeah. 
Um, I apologize that this postmortem has been, uh, in particular, has been extra rambly and drony. <laughs> I kind of wish I had more uh, stuff planned out and uh, thought up, but um, I guess that's kind of it. Yeah, we ended up with Pacifax, who turned out to be a pretty awesome uh, ruler herself. Also got the Crusade stuff, um, and I think she was the first one that we tried out to, uh, as... The first one to have be the beneficiary. Wait. Um, the crusade that she went on was the first time that we set ourselves up as the beneficiary. That's it. Sorry. <laughs> really had to use, uh, pull up all my fucking um, mental acro acrobatics to be able to uh, pull that off, it seems. But yeah, um, cool to see that that's what happens when you do that. Still... Not entirely sure why Bhutan here was granted to um, the person, someone else besides myself. Because everything else seemed to be mine. Uh, obviously, we need to revoke the stuff from the uh, Buddhists and whatnot, um, the minor holdings, but besides that... Yeah, interesting. And also really cool how the Crusade mechanics work. I'd like to see it, like, in proper action next time, though, um, as a Catholic, so that maybe it's not so bugged and all that shit. Okay, so I think that's about it for our family dynasty. I don't know if there's much else. Oh, let me actually go through the uh, culture map mode. Wow. So, yeah, Europe is mostly Basque. Interesting. Hmm. I didn't think it would, uh, spread as quickly as it did. Though, I mean, it's still kind of surprising to see... Pockets of uh, Frank and uh, Frankish and uh, French and all that stuff happening. Lombard still? Wow. Yeah, I, I for for sure I thought that um, the Lombard culture would have uh, converted over to Italian or something at this point. It's crazy that it's still going on. Same with Frankish. But um, yeah, so the world. I guess the most uh, prevalent culture is still um, Basque, which is uh, pretty insane. It's just spreading here too. Damn. I guess some of the, I mean, I think the cultural conversion stuff is largely RNG. So the longer it's been under the care of someone who's Basque, the higher chances it has of converting to that culture, which kind of makes sense why um, the majority of Europe is Basque. But yeah. I don't know if there's much else for me to uh, really show. I think that's pretty much about it, I would say. Um, let's see. Just a quick run through the ledger. Just feel free to um, pause the video if you want. Uh, let's see. Not much else. Nothing too interesting going down here, I don't think. Yeah. It'd be cool to see something like... What, what is it, like uh, Zoroastrianism or Zunism still survive, but they almost never do, I would say. And our dynasty have a fair bit of people. Not all of them Basque, though. No, some Frankish and Greek folks. Interesting. And Doric vassals, all Fraticelli, mostly all Basque. Whoa. So, oh no, we have a Catholic uh, vassal in our midst, as well as our Cathar one. But yeah, almost all of our vassals are... Oh wait, no, I guess not. Well, I, I'd say the majority of our vassals are uh, Basque, though, so still counts. Mm. And that's about it for independent uh, realms. Might have been uh, too fast with that, but that's fine. Okay, so in terms of our next campaign, still not uh, fully decided. I'm still... Uh... Heavily leaning towards having a um, uh, streaming our uh, future campaigns in a CK2 until CK3 gets released and all that such. And then we'll check that out. Um, the only other campaign that I can really think of that I think would w um, be a decent uh, series would be a Slavic campaign. Because there's the... I, f I still don't remember the uh, name of the achievement. But the one, the Three Brothers one. Where you have to have like um, a check and... I forget what they're called. Shit, I don't remember. But there's a whole bunch of stuff that I think that's kind of related to uh, the Slavic culture. Um, and the Slavic religion. As well as uh, Russia and whatnot. So, it's a possibility. Um, but we'll see. I might actually do a 
a little bit about streaming just to see, ju gauge the, um, I guess, uh, reception for it. And then if it's uh, pretty good, then we'll uh, stick with it. If not, then... Or, I mean, even if so, we might do a future uh, campaign as the, uh, the Slavic um, Pagans and see how that goes and all that such. Uh, I think that's about it. I don't know if there's much else to say. Um, I apologize again for being extra rambly with this um, one, but... I guess we haven't had a campaign that's uh, been as long as this one for quite some time. Because I think my more recent campaigns have been around... What? The 60 episode mark? Somewhere around there, 50-60-ish? So, relatively fast wrapping stuff, whereas this one kind of went to almost 90, so almost three months of our time. And I apologize for the uh, gaps in between. Um, still kind of dealing with health issues and whatnot, but, um, you know... Hopefully we'll get better soon, or I'll get better soon, rather. <laughs> I'm not talking in the royal we here. I'm not a megalomaniac, but yeah. Um, so let's wrap up our postmortem before I keep um, saying um and uh, sounding like broken record and all that shit, and, and, and embarrassing myself further. Uh, what else did I want to talk about? That's about it, really. Yeah, I really enjoyed this campaign. Um, the takeaway is that in the future, if we do do another Catholic campaign, we might stick with being Catholic rather than uh, switch over to a heresy, just so we can kind of see um, how it's supposed to work, quote unquote. And what else? What else? So at the right, at the moment, at the time of recording, I have approximately. Let me see. I think I have. 115. Let me just get the right number of achievements here. I have unlocked 115 achievements out of a possible 166 in CK2. So I believe that's uh, 71% thus far. Um, a lot of the stuff that I don't have are very specific ones. Like, for example, uh, start out as, um, as a uh, British king or whatever. A very specific British king. And then take over all of Britannia or... Something about um, being Anglo-Saxon, or like being a... <sighs> being one of the historical characters, like a lot of the achievements that I don't have are for the historical characters that um, that are supposed to accomplish certain things. So things like that, but um, I think that's more fitting for a um, stream campaign and that kind of stuff. So that's probably going to be, um, you know, as a stream. <laughs> Good God. Okay, but yeah, let's end the um, post-mortem here. Uh, we'll be back in our future campaign, whether it's a recorded um, one as a Slavic Pagan or a mini-series or something in a, um, in a stream. We'll be back for sure. I think I'll probably take a bit of a break from CK2, though. Um, maybe... I don't know. We, we might actually just um, put a break in here so that we have another series in between. Or we can just um, start uh, streaming the CK2 uh, two stuff as soon as possible, I guess. And I'll be sure to have an announcement on my um, channel page to make sure that uh, you guys know when and where I'm streaming and all that such so that you can uh, join me if you, uh, if you so choose. Alright guys, um, that's enough of my rambling. Uh, so sorry about the... <laughs> verbal diarrhea that just spewed forth, but none of this is uh, scripted. Um, I don't really write anything down. I have a few uh, bullet points that I want to address, but um, I didn't really do any uh, for this time, so <laughs> oops. <laughs> I guess that's one of the uh, reasons why I'm so rambly today. Oh, um, and we also uh, <laughs> conquered China. I should have not mentioned that. Fuck. <laughs> Good God. All right, guys. Um, thank you so much for keeping up with the campaign. Thank you so much for um, even spending a busy, uh, like a minute of your busy day uh, listening to me ramble and um, bumble through the uh, this Christian campaign. Thank you for the uh, comments and the tips and suggestions and the likes. Thank you for subscribing. And um, if you want to support the channel, you can always leave a like, leave a comment, be um, subscribe. And if you want to uh, support the channel financially, you can do so via Patreon or by joining the channel as a member via YouTube or subscribing to me on Twitch. Anyway, um, works and even just leaving a like or a comment is uh, definitely uh, supporting enough. 
All right, guys. So let's leave this off here. We'll um, be back whenever, whenever sometime in the near future with a new CK2 campaign. Um, if I don't see you then, I'll hopefully see you around somewhere else on the channel in our future uh, series and stuff. Okay, so thank you so much for watching and have an amazing breakfast.